Hello, Atomic Potter ones. I'm your Jedi Master Day, and I'd like to welcome you guys to this episode of Uncovering Star Wars Lore. This episode, we're going to be talking about Candace Ordo from Clan Ordo, a human male Mandalorian who fought in the Mandalorian Wars as well as helped Revan towards the end of the Jedi Civil War and helped Mijasurik in the Dark Wars. He has black hair, steel gray eyes, and is set to be 63 years old by 3951 BBY. He has two cybernetics, regeneration booster and ability boosters. By the time that you meet him in Night's Lower Republic, his hair is starting to gray. Some of Kander's personality traits are he lives for battle, he's blood hungry, always waiting for a fight. He could often be very brash and very angry. He always seeked honor and believed that it could be achieved through conflict with worthy enemies. He was never very diplomatic and always believed in the idea that the sword was mightier than the pen. Due to his experience in battle, especially with Jedi, it allowed him to shrug off a lot of mind-affecting abilities such as Jedi mind tricks and fear-based force powers. He also had cybernetic implants that allowed him to regenerate a few wounds and recover far more quickly than the average person. It also allowed him to have slightly enhanced strength and mental prowess, and his regenerative ability allowed him to heal severe injuries, albeit in a catatonic state. His weapon of choice prior to becoming Mandalore was a prototype of a heavy repeating blaster. However, after becoming Mandalore, he chose a common repeating blaster rifle and donned the armor of Mandalore. So, Kander's Ordo. He served in the Mandalorian Neo Crusaders and he was involved in several battles which gained him a lot of glory and prestige amongst the Mandalorians due to his very bold tactics and impressive leadership skills. He had many successes, but despite all this success, they were eventually defeated by the Republic during the Mandalorian Wars. Despite this, the Mandalorians respected Revan greatly, and Candorus himself heavily respected Revan for his military tactics and his leadership abilities. After the Mandalorians were scattered across the galaxy, Candorus began working as a mercenary, eventually settling down on Terrus working for Davik Kang, a local crime lord. While on Terrus, Candorus stumbles upon a unknowing Revan, though at first Candorus did not recognize Revan because Revan was suffering from amnesia and was a Republic soldier, as well as his face was unmasked. Candorus ended up growing very bored of life on Terrace and being a mercenary and decided to assist Revan as the best he could with helping him get access codes so that they could infiltrate Davik Kang's base and leave on the Evan Hawk. Okay, so I'm going to go through Nazar Republic again since we have to uh, get this done. So, Revan meets Kander's Order in Knights of the Republic, as stated above. At first, he just doesn't recognize him, and the multiple encounters eventually lead up to Kander saying that he wants to help him get off a of terrace. He gives him a tip on how to get a droid that can hack into the Sith base so that they can get the terrace launch code so that they can infiltrate Davik King's base, where Candorus is stating that Revan, as the Republic soldier, is looking to be recruited. After infiltrating the Ebon Hawk and taking it to Dantooine, Candorus continues to travel with Revan and his crew as they collect all the star maps, and he even runs into one of his old Mandalorian comrades, who is very spiteful against him, and depending on the player's choice, you can either kill this person or you can see make him see the light of day and he will give up his own life. So the reason that Candorus decided to join Revan was that he believed that he would find new challenges in this adventure. And whenever Revan finally regained his memory, 
of who he really was. Candorus had realized that this was Revan and remained loyal, saying that he was honored to fight alongside such a formidable warrior. After Darth Malak and the Star Forge were destroyed, Candorus and Revan, along with all the other companions, were honored by the Republic for their role in the entire thing. And afterwards, Revan helped Candorus retrieve the Mask of Mandalore and became Mandalore the Preserver. Soon after, Revan regained memories of the threat in the Unknown Regions and left telling Candorus to rebuild the Mandalorian strength for when he returns. Candorus then proceeded to reunite the scattered clans across the galaxy, rebuilding under one Mandalore him. While doing this, he ended up meeting Michasurik. Okay, I'm going to go through a quick debriefing of Star Wars Knights of the Republic 2, if you guys want to watch a full uncommentated playthrough, uh, I will have one linked down in the description box below. My own is almost all, is also almost done. I would highly recommend that you watch it. And if you want to see this all unfold naturally, since this is going to be just a very vague description. So Mitri meets Candorus on Duxin after escaping there to get away from the blockade on Onderon. After gaining enough prestige within the clan, Candorus decides to help Mitra get onto Onderon. And after Onderon, Candorus also decides to stick with Mitra in the hopes to rebuild his clan. While doing this, he assists her in defeating the threat known as Darth Nihilus, and even helps her defeat Darth Treya. After him and Sirik eliminated the Sith, Candorus parted ways with her and awaited Revan's return from the Unknown Regions, keeping the Mandalorians ready. Thanks to Revan's command to reunite the Mandalorians, the Mandalorians were able to gain a bit of their former power back and reestablish the Mandalorians as a faction within galactic affairs so that's gonna do it for this episode of uncovering Star Wars lore if you guys enjoyed it please give it a like it does help out a lot tell a friend today about my Star Wars channel cuz it's pretty awesome and may the force be with you always